So, Fields McConnell, you're asking me to believe that a criminal cabal that really pretty much runs the United States government and just about anything globally they choose to has existed and had this kind of power for at least my lifetime and for generations. How can that be? Well, it's not Field McConnell trying to explain this to you. It's Able Danger it was a, a network of global people that care about their countries and their freedoms and their children. And we've come together as an all volunteer force of uh, private intelligence people. And we have uncovered the, the cabal that has been involved in many false flag uh, attacks and also the recent murder of Gareth Williams. They were in, they were involved in the attacks of 9/11. They were involved in uh, our recent wars, plural. They were involved in Katrina, and rather than be like some radio personalities who talk about they and them, and they do not get specific, I can tell you that our research from around the globe has identified the perpetrators as the Crown agents which are a group that started in 1833 in England. And somewhere between 1833 and today, they went rogue and they were brought into existence to protect the assets and the property of the sovereign of England back in 1833. Like I said, somewhere they've gone rogue and they've decided that all the money, uh, and the money typically has come from three things. Uh, in recent times, drugs, oil, and weapons, and prior to that, the three sources of the money were on the east coast of the U.S. They would ship wood and uh, some other products down to the Caribbean where they would pick up some rum. And the other products, by the way, are fish. So wood and fish take that from, say, Virginia to the Caribbean, and they would pick up rum, take the rum over to West Africa, trade the rum to the people that gathered up human trafficking, which we historically have called slaves, and they bring the slaves back to America. So it was a three-way circle. And that three-way circle has been refined and uh, reformatted over the years, but all throughout the years, going back to 1833, it's been done. The human trafficking, the trafficking in drugs, and the trafficking in uh, weaponry has been done for the benefit of the Crown agents and the banks that stand behind them. Is that lucid enough? It's pretty lucid. Uh... I guess the human trafficking, of course, prior to uh, uh, the Civil War, I guess that was to a certain extent legal. Uh, but after that, uh, why hasn't the FBI, why, hasn't, uh, why haven't the gendarmes of some country or another, hopefully ours, United States, uh, done something about it? Well, I'll address the United States first, and then I'll get over to the gendarmes, which is French, and the Brits. But in the United States, the FBI really wants to unravel this. That's why as recently as 3.30 p.m. this past Saturday, which according to my mind was the 25th of September, at 3.30 p.m. the Minneapolis, Houston, and uh, Washington offices of the FBI, uh, they apparently were cross-talking. They sent a message to MI5 and MI6 over in England. And the issue that's going to bring them together is the recent death of a MI5 or MI6 agent named Gareth Williams, whose body was found murdered in a pink or red hold-all bag, which is about this big and about that tall and equally wide. And it uh, comfortably could contain a human body, a bunch of drugs, and it could very comfortably contain a child. And these bags are going in and out, passing security at the airports. The security at the airports, and the FBI knows this, and the intelligence folks in England know this full well, that the security has been compromised going back to 1989, when a corporation named ADT, or Alpha Delta Tango, was given a 45-year contract to provide security for the United Kingdom and the United States. And they're not doing it. Let's bring in the gendarmes. Back in history, and I'm not a history buff, but there is a history teacher in this room right now with us off camera. And the French and the British fought over who would get the colonies. And they went back and forth. They did all sorts of nasty things to the Native Americans, to each other, and to the, uh, the colonists who had left the oppression of Europe. And they left the scarcity of Europe back in the late 1800s. They came to America, and with their uh, raw sinew and their great... I see the clock has stopped, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. with, with their muscles and their wherewithal and their uh, long suffering, 
these people from countries as diverse as Russia, Poland, uh, Norway, England, France, Germany, they came together and they built an industrialized nation called the United States of America, which from an industrial capacity and performance is the greatest nation that's ever existed on the face of the earth industrially. But we're being deindustrialized now. Once again, we're being deindustrialized de uh, by the same group that has done the false flag. And once again, that group is the crown agents and uh, a subculture of that group is a group that I'll be speaking at in Austin, Texas tomorrow night. And as the FBI offices, uh, I think around the nation now are fully aware, there is a group of miscreants within the crown agents that are called the Twisted Sisters. And that's a term I came up with looking at a, uh, a book called Sisters written by, written by Lynn Cheney. And uh, this brings us to 9-11 inadvertently, but Lynn Cheney was in the war room or the PEB uh, below the White House on 9-11. What's she doing there? She's the wife of the vice president. And I would encourage anyone who wants to unravel this. It's not that difficult. These people are not intelligent. They're evil. All you have to do is look at the book she wrote called Sisters. And it's going to be increasingly more difficult to find the Sisters book because former Vice President Mrs. Cheney have not allowed it to be republished, even though the publishers want to sell it because there's revenue out there. But that's quite a long run on answer to your uh, question. But the United States of America basically became too powerful, and now the same people that participated in industrializing us, building us up, they're tearing us down from the inside out. They're using the crown agents, and uh, there is a crown agent with a CUKC passport that uh, currently resides at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And I, there's different organizations out there that say this is a germane argument or this argument has been settled. Well, the settlement of the argument about the eligibility of the commander in chief has not been settled. It needs to be settled. The commanders in the field and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, cannot issue a legitimate order because they do not know, unless they know something we don't, we as the American people, and we have every right to know, is this person eligible to be our president? He either is or he's not. If he is, I'll apologize to him on camera. I believe he's not. I believe he has a CUKC passport. And just to show this is nothing other than a good conversation between two supposed friends. Um, the person who lives at 1600 graduated from Punahou School in 1979, and I graduated from Punahou School in 1970, excuse me, 1967, uh, before I went to the Naval Academy. And I have worked in NORAD, which is North American Air Defense, and I've flown as an airline pilot for 32 years. And um, in studying 9-11, I went down a road that led to the Crown Sisters. And I think that's a sufficient answer to your question, I hope. And if it's not, any precise questions are entertained. Well, there's a lot of threads to pull out of that. There were, that was numerous, interesting, and informative. Uh, let, me just, uh, let me just ask this. So what kind of optimism do you feel that the, Fed, that the, uh, the MI groups and the, uh, uh, the FBI have entered this? Do you feel a note of relief like, oh, the Calvary's finally here? Yes, I do. Uh, and I think that, uh, that within 60 days, we're going to have a resolution to many of these issues. And I'm not referring to the 2nd of November of, of uh, this year. The elections, the midterm elections will be what they are. Uh, that, that's insignificant to me. I'm not a political person. I'm uh, more interested in protecting children, protecting innocent parties around the globe. I recently spent a year and a half flying in Kazakhstan because when I blew the whistle on four illegal modifications made to airliners that still are installed today, and I'm not suggesting they're installed in all airliners. I'm just suggesting they're installed in Brazilian Embraers, in Canadian Bombardiers, in American Boeings, and uh, I'm forgetting, oh yes, our friends, the gendarmes, the French Airbuses. Mm. And actually, as long as we're on the subject of Airbus, it's a French corporation, Talus, that produced the, the uh, illegal modification to the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot. And France also provided a second weapon, which is Smacksonic, which is uh, a product that looks like thermal, vibrational, and uh, sound insulation, but it's not. It's rocket fuel. And when it's ignited electronically and remotely, it goes from ambient temperature to 5,800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is rather an explosive statement. Stay tuned for more. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos. 
ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.